I have been really active in the Ruby community in the past, and I co-founded an AV production company that you might have heard of called Confreaks that did a lot, filmed a lot of events uh, in that community. Um, I'm also really into blockchain ever since I first heard about Bitcoin back in 2010. Uh, I was a member of the London Ethereum meetup in the early days where I met Victor over there. It was really great and uh, also participated in the pre-sale. And now I'm really excited to be with Mainframe where we're building a fully decentralized messaging platform for businesses. And as almost every presentation has said so far, if we find favor with the demo gods, we're going to show you a sneak peek of what we're working on. Um, I'm honored to be sharing the stage also with my colleague, uh, Shane Howley, one of our lead engineers. So you guys might want to get out your laptops because we're going to be doing a collaborative group chat session at the end of our demo. So get excited for that. Collaboration tools today present various trade-offs. Companies want their communications to be secure, convenient, and real-time but they also want to retain control of their own data, and they don't want to have to rely on any third-party infrastructure or proprietary software. Beyond just encrypting your data, companies want their communications to resist disruption and surveillance. You could say the same for individuals as well. Um, these, we also want to achieve convenient and secure messaging between organizations. So, if you're running on a fully decentralized messaging platform, it means you should never have to ask, whose IT are we running on? Not only that, we're trying to build uh, directory services that make it very easy for organizations to share contacts with one another and to manage their own contacts. Mainframe is trying to do all of these things. Essentially, uh, we want to create a decentralized Slack with dark routing and a few extra features besides. We want it to be a compromise-free messaging platform for your organization. And we're thrilled to be working with the Swarm team to make this possible. So just to give you guys a little bit of background on the company, we're a team of 12. We're headquartered in London. And for the past two years, we've been working on a micro-format-based real-time messaging platform. And we're now leveraging this experience to move into a new phase of development that will be fully decentralized. Uh, so one of the first questions I'd like to get out of the way um, is, do people really need messaging that's this secure? We heard some details from Lewis about this. This uh, system is not just encrypted, but it can't easily be detected or disrupted. So as we've seen in recent years, the threat of dragnet surveillance and corporate espionage are greater than many of us realized, but we actually think that there's more trivial and mundane reasons for uh, us to want this level of security in our messaging. While it's possible for people to run their own email servers and to use PD PGP for all their messaging, hardly anybody does this. And when you're interacting with other people who don't, you have to trust numerous third parties who may or may not have your best interests in mind, um, or who might not always be reliable. Some of you may remember not too long ago, Slack went down in the middle of the US workday for quite some time. Um, and even if these organizations do seem to have your best interest in mind, there's no guarantee that they always will. Um, and besides that, emailing somebody at a managed domain means that the manager of that domain can also see your communication. So even if you trust the person you're talking to, um, there may be other people in the chain that you don't trust. True user sovereignty means that we minimize the level of trust and the technical ability required. If your app isn't easy for non-technical users, all the amount of security in the world isn't really going to help you. Fully decentralized messaging also means that it's less likely for company secrets to be seen by people who shouldn't have access to them. And it protects companies from accidental or forced disclosure of private information. These kinds of concerns are actually kind of a big deal for IT and tech managers. A recent uh, security journal said that 73% of InfoSec officers expected to experience a major security breach within the next year. So let me get into some of the architectural uh, strategy and, and challenges. One of the first questions that we faced as we were beginning our transition to fully decentralized uh, development is, what do you do about those dependencies for which a decentralized solution doesn't exist yet? 
So our general approach to this is, um, you know, you kind of have a chicken and egg problem. So our generalized pro approach to this is that in the long term, we want to build and contribute to decentralized infrastructure projects like Swarm. But we also want to provide our users with a pragmatic short-term solution that, it, that retains as much user sovereignty as possible. So now we're gonna look at a little bit of what we've already accomplished here. Um, first, we have uh, mailboxing services that we're working on. Uh, by default, in Swarm, your messages are ephemeral. If they come while you're disconnected, or you want to retrieve them on another device, or you want to search through old messages, you're gonna have to have a mailboxing service. And we're gonna demo this feature in just a moment. Uh, we've all also developed a lot of expertise around real-time messaging, and we're gonna leverage this to make an amazing cross-platform app for group chat. And we're gonna show you this too. So I'm um, now moving into the demo portion of our demonstration, um, our presentation. Uh, I'm just gonna describe a little bit of the architecture of this demo. Uh, we have a Swarm node. We have a mailbox service running beside this Swarm node in the same Electron app that we've packaged for the desktop. And this service is exposing a GraphQL API um, that the clients talk to to get updates on messages and to retrieve old messages, et cetera. Um, and we'll be demonstrating uh, both mobile and desktop apps. And so now I'm gonna turn the time over to Shane for this demo. Thanks, Carl. Uh, hi, everyone. We're now going to look at a demo of our prototype messaging client using PSS. In one moment. Okay, so just to describe what we have running in this machine, um, we have a cluster of swarm nodes running in these terminal windows. And on the other screen, we have a few, can you switch over, Carl? Uh, on this screen, um, we have some instances of our app, and each one of these is connected to one of the swarm nodes that we just saw. Um, So uh, each one of these instances connects to the Swarm nodes using an RPC interface and maintains a local database of all the messaging protocol data that is sent or received over that interface. Uh, this data is then exposed uh, via a GraphQL server, and that data is used to feed the UI. Uh, uh, but uh, as Carl said, just the uh, GraphQL server could be deployed in the cloud somewhere as a standalone service, so you could have like light, um, thin desktop and mobile clients. Okay, so uh, in order to start a conversation, uh, we're gonna need uh, the user's public key that we wanna talk to. So if, uh, this public key is used to encrypt all the messages that are sent to this user. So if we copy Carl's public key here, we can send him a contact request. Uh, now what's happened here is I don't know where Carl is on the network. Um, so I sent a broadcast out over the network with a payload that on can only be decrypted by Carl uh, containing my public key, my swarm address, and my profile so he can see who's contacting him. But right now I don't know anything about him, but if he accepts the contact request, his client will reciprocate this handshake and we can start chatting. So what you've just seen here is the decentralized messaging hello world. Uh, to make it easier to add a contact, we also have a mobile app that we can use to read the, the public keys from QR codes. So uh, what we're seeing on this screen here is a mirror of the display with a, of our connected iPhone here. And the iPhone can be used to hook into the GraphQL server that's uh, currently running inside these Electron apps. Um, so uh, in order to connect to the GraphQL server, we just need its IP address. 
And for convenience, we can get it from the profile. And now if Carl shows me his public key, we can scan it. And we should be able to start sending them some messages. And hey. And you can see that the data is mirrored between uh, both connected clients. Uh, so that's an example of the, the mobile app that we have. Uh, so now we also support group messaging with channels. So let's create a channel now to talk about uh, engineering. So we can select who we want in the channel. Um, now I'll explain a little about this privacy level. Uh, so this actually refers to how the routing is done inside the Swarm cluster. Uh, so the dark routing uses no recipient addresses. Um, going back to what Lewis uh, talked about earlier. Um, and uh, this is useful for, uh, for providing plausible deniability of receipt for the true recipient and uh, pr disrupting potential surveillance. Whereas the direct routing is a more traditional shortest path style routing. So one thing I want to add um, is that we're going to be adding you know, additional levels of darkness and, and configurability around this feature. But really, right now, this is the only uh, group chat kind of platform that provides you with this, this sort of dark networking feature uh, that you get uh, b thanks to Swarm. Um, and you can also notice here that even though I wasn't connected to Adam, um, I know about him now from joining the channel. And if I want to make a direct connection, I can do it from here. Uh, now, at Mainframe, we've been working on rich messaging formats for a while now, and we've adapted some of our favorite features into our decentralized demo. Uh, so uh, one of our favorite features is actually attaching action items to messages. So we can do that using the action button on the input bar. Um, we also have real-time typing notifications that you can see down here. Um, we also support file uploads, and we've actually implemented this using the File, uh, swarm file storage. So if we click the file upload button, select the file, it uploads the file into swarm, and when the message is sent, we just send the swarm hash of the file so that the clients can just use the, the swarm uh, chunk requesting to, to get the file. Um, if we send an image attachment, uh, we actually just show it in line. Um, so this is just a sneak peek at some of the features that are going to be in our uh, decentralized messaging product. And um, now I think we're going to go over to the or audience participation section. So if everyone has their laptops ready, what you'll need to do is uh, connect to this Wi-Fi network that we have set up in the room, mainframe PSS. So change your Wi-Fi. This is a this is a desktop. Is a laptop only. Uh, uh, demo. Um, browse this URL, uh, 10.0.0.2, and you should see this beautiful web page. Um, you can download the app using these links here. Um, so if we open our app, uh, so uh, just to tell you about the cluster, we're running um, 50 swarm nodes uh, in a cluster on this uh, web server. And when you open up the app, you'll be assigned randomly to one of the swarm nodes, and you'll get a random profile. So if we open up the app. OK, we're going to download it. <laughs> OK, here we go. So we are uh, Anna Tiffany. And in order to get access to our public key, if we go back to the website, you can see a list of all the users who are currently connected. So this is us here. If you click on any row here, it will copy the public key to your clipboard. And you can make contact requests. So we have some coming in there already. 
Um, so jump in and we'll, we'll get a group chat session going. Uh, but for now, I'll hand you back to Carl. All right, so uh, while we're accepting new uh, chat requests from all these lovely memes, um, I just want to tell you guys a little bit about some future directions that we're thinking of uh, going. So one of the things we want to add is um, the ability to search through your message archives. Um, we're also looking at um, easy deployments to either your own infrastructure or to our uh, managed service, if you prefer a more turnkey solution. Um, we're looking at, uh, we've been working for a while on a bot marketplace that will allow people to buy and sell extensions to the platform. Um, and a bunch of other features. Uh, we'd love to get your feedback and your ideas as well. And uh, the demo that uh, we've been showing you today is also going to be open source and you can play around with it. So um, stay tuned for news from us about that. But uh, for the next little while, I think there's a break after this, so like we can just go to town on these chat sessions, guys. Let's just, uh, just go for it. Oh, I guess a few people, we've already started our session, so, oh, and uh, please keep it clean, you know, keep it safe for work, um, you know. We got some taco fans. Um, well, maybe we could take some questions if you yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. We've uh, we any any questions left. from the audience? Oh, this is like unread. So somebody here sent me a message. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's a little cold in here. If someone uh, you know is uh, if some new activity has occurred, it shows red. Yeah. Any? Yeah. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And that, that is one sort of uh, hand-waving portion of the demo is that we're not actually encrypting the uploaded content, but... but please don't, like, don't write your open source system layer. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. We, we love the Swarm team. Glad that they're helping us out. That's awesome. Um, oh, that's... I love, the, I love the gifts. Keep them coming. They're great. Um, yeah, any other questions? Uh huh. Back here. Just yell it out. It's great. Um, so uh, earlier in the presentation, when I was on uh, PSS, it was earlier in the pre or in the previous presentation, it was mentioned that the um, the the uh, message isn't guaranteed to be sent. Mm -hmm. So in this a and it, that it should be handled on the, on the application side. How are you guys handling uh, that, that kind of situation? And then also for files, how are, how are you maintaining that that file will stay around for a longer period of time? So um, eventually, Swarm will provide uh, more guarantees that you, or ways of guaranteeing that a file is retained and, and stays, and you can sort of pay a little extra for that. So I think there are certain things in the incentivization layer that will make that possible. Um, remind me your first question again. Oh, yeah, so right now we're just kind of hoping that the message gets there, and if it doesn't, uh, oh well. But um, we'll probably bake into the client some type of retry idea, some, maybe some sort of acknowledgement. Uh, uh, that that it, it at least sounds like a good idea um, offhand. Any other questions? Yeah. Oh, so there, it does not actually preserve the message order. So. In some cases, we may find that some users have a slightly different view of me the message order than others. Um, although there may be, we've talked about some ways of sort of replaying history um, in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion, so that peers could like say, "Well, I know this much about the uh, group, this group that you just joined." So there might be some ways of sharing common views of the world, but those views would still be uh, confined to like the individual peers and what they see. Um, and we think that for most um, real-time chat situations, that's probably sufficient. But you know, there might be some weird special applications where you might need a higher level of synchronization uh, between nodes. But for this app, it's probably, probably OK. Any other questions? All right, well, hey, thanks a lot, guys. Um, we're, there's nothing after this for a little while, so if you guys want to 
you know, keep going with the memes. Uh, have at it. And uh, thanks again.